Hi, I'm Mike Robinson from Farming the Wild, and today I'm going to be breaking down a haunch of fallow deer. Now, butchery is one of the most important skills to get the most out of your quarry. So, what have we got here? Let's have a look at this beautiful haunch of deer weighing probably 10 pounds. Now, as you can see, it's been boned off the carcass and the shank has been sawed off here. What have we got to do? Well, first thing we do to make a start on this, to get the most out of it, is we want to take the shank off. Now, the shank is a lovely, lovely cut in its own right. So we guess all we do here is we find the flat joint and make a very clean cut straight across, like so, and then straight through the flat joint. You wiggle the knife and off it comes. And there we have a perfect shank that can be braised and slow cooked and turned into something absolutely magnificent or sticky maybe with red wine, wild mushrooms, glazed shallots. It's a delicious thing in its own right. And in fact, slow braised shank is one of the recipes I'm going to be cooking in this series. But, you know, first of all, we have to get our deer leg boned out. And I'm going to do this in the French style, which is called seaming. And this really gets the most out of it. So look at the end bone here. And the knife is going to follow this to there is the hip joint here. So I'm going to go in an even cut like so until I get down to the joint. And then I'm going to just score with the very tip of the knife along the inside of the bone. And if you do it like this, you won't cut into any of the primal muscles, which will all be perfect. Work your way around the outside. And now lift up the bone, go underneath it, moving it around. Now these bones are wonderful in uh, used for stocks. So whatever you do, don't throw them away. There we are, there's my bone. And now here <clears throat> is my haunch, deboned. So once you've taken off the shank of the haunch and you've removed the main bone, you're left with sort of a big boneless part of meat. Now, this is actually made up of four base big primal muscles and all you do is follow those muscles. So you see, I'm pulling it apart with my hand and I'm only using the knife just to cut them apart. Very nice. There it is, you can see I run my thumb up and there's the gap between the muscles. So in goes the knife and there's our first primal ready to go. Next one immediately on the side here and we call this the salmon. Um, no idea why but we call it the salmon and again it will just come off very nicely. Using your hands first. And that's the salmon. Brilliant. Okay, now here you'll find a bit of stuff, so just trim away, and that there is going into the grind pile, which I'm going to put over here. So next, flip it round facing you, get your hands in the middle here, and what we're trying to do here is get underneath the chump or the top rump. So, and we roll the chump off. Like so, trim out anything we don't want for the grind pile. And there you have a perfect chump or top rump. Okay, next, the last two major primals just come apart like so. And you see how easy this is. It's such an easy process. You literally allow the muscles to tell you where to go. So wherever you find a gap in the muscles, that's where you cut. Once you've now got these separated, you start to work on trimming them into beautiful long primals in their own right. Those primals can then be turned into a number of different things. If you want to uh, turn them into jerky, something we're gonna do in one of these programs, you then cut them into long thin strips. If you want to turn it into steaks, you cut it into big fat juicy steaks. Another thing I'm gonna show you how to cook. It's super versatile and it also provides the most meat on the animal. So think beyond backstrap. This, if anything, can be better than a backstrap. Super juicy and in fact, this makes up the mainstay 
of the dishes I cook in my restaurant for my customers. Haunch. Okay. Now, one of the things you really, really need to do is have a sharp knife for this. And, and the type of knife is important. This is your classic boning knife. It has about a five inch blade. I like these slightly curved ones. This particular one from Flint and Flame has a non-slip rubberized handle, which is great when you've got blood on your hands. Nice and ergonomic, takes a very good edge. So to sharpen it, I've got a steel. This is a diamond steel, they're very cheap. You hold the knife with your thumb on the blade like that, put it 20 degrees is the angle there, and draw the knife towards yourself. That's why you have a guard, so you can't cut yourself. Once, twice, and then, not, not pressing too hard. Every five, 10 minutes of butchery stop, because sinews dull your blade, stop and just give it a little polish on the steel and it will stay sharp forever. Okay, now we carry on. This is the silver side. So first thing I'm gonna do is remove the silver side, like so. You notice I put the knife tip under the sinew, lift it and it, the sinew must always be under tension and then you can just slide the knife through and off it comes. It's a bit of a neck knack. Under the sinew, that's it, take that bit off. And then you're taking off long strips. And this way you're not chisel cutting away at the meat and leaving it ragged. I can actually now just slice that one off. Very nice. Now, sinew here. So piles of sinew I put in a separate pile. And what I tend to do with those is roast them until they're all nasty and dark and sticky and throw them in stocks and we will be doing a venison stock later on. That's what the sinews for, so there's zero waste. Carrying on, we're going to trim. And the technique there, always the same for trimming. Put the knife under, lift it out, grip the end, lift, trim backwards. Okay, let's trim off all this stuff off the end here. Take your time too, please don't be in a rush. Okay, so now we need to remove the underside, sinew, all of that. Best way, make a cut in about an eighth of an inch from the end, turn it, this is like skinning a fish. So angling the blade down and just driving it along. And you will leave a little bit on there, but again, that will go in my meat sauce Mainly, it's coming off nicely. Now we'll take this rest of it off with the sinew technique. Okay, so that's pretty much done. We have a beautiful clean silver side, one of my favorite cuts on the animal. And this cut, this cuts really well into steaks. So if you're gonna steak cut it, cut it down like that, cut it into steaks every like so. And I'd say you want about eight ounce steaks, nice size. Okay, next, next primal here. So this is basically the top side, so we're gonna go under here, and you'll find like a, a sheet here, a sheath of meat that sits on top. You just work away at it, remove it. Makes delicious grind or stew. Take that off. Now this particular piece cuts into two separate muscles, as you can see, there and there. Take off the little bit on the underside. Trimming.
beauty, look at that. Now, on this you will find a little bit of tendon underneath the back end here, so just trim that out. There we go. Another stunning primal muscle. Okay, now the nut. This is a, a tricky cut and is often used as a roasting joint because it's naturally curled around the bone. But I'm gonna turn it into a load of stew and dice and two beautiful fat steaks. First of all, take the edges off. You can see where the sinew is there. Follow it. That's it. Now that will go into stunning diced meat. That is beautiful. And you see all this stuff here. This is collagen or connective tissue. And that will make for wonderful stews because it will break down into sticky deliciousness. So, nice bit of stew meat. Here. Again, working away anything on the side. So I very much, while I'm doing this, I'm looking for meat to turn into stew and looking for meat to make into grind, okay? And then there's the sinew pile, the sinew pile which will get roasted and turned into sauce. So some of this can go stew, some of this can go grind. Really, that's kind of your choice. Okay. So now we've got to get this sinew off this thing, so be quite bold, be quite aggressive. You see the knife's lovely and sharp. Okay, now, there is a sinew that runs basically down the center of this. So first of all, get the inside sinew out exposing it like that don't be afraid of this it's delicious and now i'm going to take the knife at the angle following the line of that main sinew that runs down the middle take that little bit off it's really worth it this because you do actually get two gorgeous gorgeous grilling steaks out of this there's one and here's another which i'm just going to trim the edges off so there's your two stunning central steaks that come out of it. There's a big pile of stewing meat, sinew, and grind. And then finally, here is our stunning shank. So here you have it. What you get out of a haunch in a few minutes using a little bit of skill, a nice sharp knife, and a little bit of a knowledge of anatomy. Obviously, with those big part, those big primals there, you can either roast them whole as roasts, uh, wrap them in bacon, roast them gently on a low heat, maybe 220 degrees, for like you know 30 or 40 minutes, and then finish them nice and hot. But they're beautiful, and in my case, in this, I'm going to next turn this haunch into jerky. So the next recipe in this series is going to be how to make amazing banging oriental style jerky so it's going to have flavors of ginger and miso and soy and honey and it's going to be delicious sweet salty tangy but really really good <laughs>